Hey everyone, I'm just um, back here again looking at Autodesk Fusion 360 and utilizing it for plasma cool tool cutting parts. I thought I'd follow up that part one with a, an addendum, part two, and more parts when we get to actually operating the machine at its controller. So I thought I'd just add this to yesterday's video. This is tool pass for a similar part, just a 2D part. Um, this one's five holes. Uh, rounded corners, so a fair few more G02, G03 arc movements in the program. Uh, I'd just like to show you specifically um, these lead in and lead out. Now sometimes, it can happen quite a lot actually, when utilizing a arc voltage torch height controller, like I mentioned in the previous video. Um, when it's cutting, these lead in and lead outs, the arc voltage torch height controller works by trying to maintain a voltage potential difference from the actual tip of the plasma torch to the material. Um, and so it adjusts its, its height based on trying to meet an input voltage in the torch height controller. Um, and if you were to say to have an angled plate or I've seen examples of corrugated plates or whatnot, it just um, tries to maintain an, an exact height offset that you've specified along the whole material. So if you've got a bow in the, in the, in the sheet or like I say, a corrugated uh, sample, uh, the torch will move accordingly so it doesn't actually run into the, the um, metal plate or sheet. Um, but what happens, and I've seen this especially with the plasma that uh, I've been using, if you have a lead out of cutting any of these holes that drop away once they're cut, um, not necessarily an issue if you're sitting under a rib under here of the, the plasma table that would catch these, but if these are sitting clear of those ribs and these drop straight through the plasma torch, um, will cut that lead in, and if it's cutting a lead out, it'll try and cut that lead out of that circle once it's already severed. So when the torch comes around full circle, gets to this point, it drops and the torch still tries to produce a cutting movement as a lead uh, out for that. Um, so like that's fine if that part doesn't move, but if that part drops, that part drops while maintaining contact with the surrounding metal, so it still has a ground to the, um, the plasma's ground to the table or to the part, and the torch tries to follow it and when it does that, it, um, given the shape of the torch, the, the beveled nozzle of the, the plasma torch, it can actually hit the material, you cutting and push it and um, ruin your entire job. So I just thought I'd show how to get rid of that lead out. So if you're seeing that issue, just to cut your part, I've got a 12 mil offset here, so just because I've defined a stock for half inch, 12 mil thick sheet metal. Um, this lead in will just finish, go to the next movement, do a lead in. So lead out will, will, won't have no lead out, sorry. It will finish, go to the next tool path, lead in with a linear and curved radii cut, tangential to the part that it's cutting out, the hole, and then just go about the whole thing. It does it for the entire part too. Um, now to do this, Fusion 360 seems to have a little bit of trouble uh, with regards to the um, processing of the kerf width or the, the tool compensation, the G41 in our G code. Um, I'll show you, if we go to editing our tool part, at this point to get it to look as it was with no lead out, in linking, you can actually untick lead out exit. Um, that assumes the compensation type it will be completed in the controller, in the computer, sorry, not the control. So that's the machine control. Um, of course, if you set your compensation in here, the compensation, if I'll show you, if I put in two millimeters as it is, you can see that two millimeter compensation. So that there, that outer circle is our actual um, drawn hole and the compensation into is, is uh, because it's cutting a hole is um, we're shifting this to the inside to ensure that our cut the outer edge of the kerf width is on the 
inner side of this circle that we've drawn so we get our holes as close as possible to what we've actually designed. Um, now I've changed the curve width back so I can get rid of that, bring that lead out back in. This is what I'm talking about with lead out. So in that situation you can see we have compensation in the computer as well. Uh, the plasma that I use, the curve width compensation is modal for that process when you actually run the um, the toolpath or the G code in the machine. So you set your curve width on the machine control and it um, sets it as modal for your G41 throughout the G code. Um, when you're doing the computer, as I said before, it actually changes the toolpath for the G code arc movements and linear movements to um, as it is, like you can see on the screen now. Okay, I can edit that. So in order to get rid of that, you have to minimize your curve width. You can't see, you can't set your curve width to zero and remove your lead out. It doesn't, it has an error saying curve width must be positive or non-zero. My solution for that, change that to something quite insignificant. Now that's one hundredth of a millimeter. I wouldn't worry about that with a plasma. Um, generally might even oversize cut these holes if we're these are for 20 mil bolts so we're cutting 22 millimeter holes so there's a little bit of play there anyway for the plasma to if it's got some tolerances that are not quite exact um, we've got rid of the lead out now the compensation type setting at the control wave the lead out deselected and the curve with minimal um, it doesn't like that if you don't have the lead out. So I set that to in computer, change the curve width, it's like minimal. Click OK. And now we have our lead ins with our lead out. So these should these will cut and sever. If they don't sever entirely, um, they will certainly remove quite easy. There's a little bit of force. Um, we can simulate that. Slow it down a little bit. You can see that lead in. Straight across the next hole, lead in, cut. And so the torch actually exits those those arc movements, those hole cuts there, right at the tangential point of the lead in. Of course our cuts for the machine I'm currently using at the moment, it's about two millimeters. Um, that will have more than enough opportunity to sever that. Alright, so the torch I control, it's a, I found that to be a good workaround in order to um, stop the torch dropping, chasing those parts as they fall and trying to maintain the torch height um, off the, uh, the plate itself. But what this will do is it'll stop cutting as soon as it gets to that point. So it's not going to be looking for that, um, not going to be looking for an arc voltage sense to, um, to ensure that to, or to, or to position the tool, um, the plasma torch from the table. So it'll, as soon as it gets to that point, that part will drop, but it'll already um, stop the plasma arc and be shifted to the next point. Um, and that has been quite a good little workaround for me. And I often find that the lead out is not entirely necessary for the majority of parts, perhaps for the external. Um, I don't know how to have, sort of make, um, make it uh, specific to the, I suppose I could uh, have a new operation. So I could come in here and I could remove my chains. I don't know if I can, yeah, I can hold, hold control and deselect. Oops. Like me. working for me. You should be able to deselect that contour anyway. That's what I'll do. 
they're all internal cuts. Seems to work fine. We go to new operation. Water laser plasma contour. This is new. Make sure we change it to plasma cutting. Curf width. Leave it as is. We'll make sure we have. Yep. Lead in, lead outs. We'll change that radius again to something like four millimeters. Lead in two millimeters. Make sure we select our contour. That's internal because we're cutting this area in here is our actual part. So we want to scrap the holes and scrap the exterior. Click OK. So now we're going to be able to cut those holes with no lead outs and then cut that with a lead in and lead out.